we're going to jump right into our message today for the sake of time. Uh, we have come to the final message in this more than a resolution series. And so this is week number four in more than a resolution. So I want to, if I could, I want to do a quick review of the previous messages, and then we're going to get into this final message. In week one, we introduced the idea of what more than a resolution is all about. How many of you know resolutions in themselves that we make at the beginning of the year? How many of you know most of those come and go? We, we've looked at the stats and we realize that 92% of all New Year's resolutions never are accomplished and 75% of all of those resolutions end in the first 30 days. How sad is that? And so we have introduced the idea of more than a resolution. So what does more than a resolution have to do with? It has to do with kingdom commitments and kingdom priorities. We boiled it down into this simple question for us as believers to ask, and here it is, what does God want to do in you and through you in 2020? That's more that's what more than resolu a resolution is all about. It's about mission. It's about calling. It's about purpose. It's about revelation. It's about destiny. A resolution is a good idea. More than a resolution is a God idea. Amen? In week two, Pastor Jeff talked about, and here's one of the lines in his message, a resolution will change your direction but a revelation from God will change your destination. And then last week, uh, we talked about the meeting place. The only way to hear from God is to meet with God. And we looked at Moses. Moses showed us how in the midst of chaos, confusion, and the busyness of life, he showed us how to establish a meeting place with God. Well, today we're gonna conclude this series with the title of the message, Encounter Him. This is in your notes, write it in if you would. More than a resolution always starts with an encounter. More than a resolution always starts with an encounter. Today we're gonna to look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, before he came to know Jesus Christ, uh, who, who was Paul known by before he came to Christ? What was his name? Saul. So if I, if I go back and forth between those two names, I'm talking about the same individual. The apostle Paul, before he came to Jesus Christ, was Saul. We know that Saul, let me give you a little bit of his background. Saul hated Christians. He hated the church. And he hated everything that it represented. You might say that Saul had a resolution. If you read the early parts of the book of Acts, you will see that Paul or Saul was resolute in his goal to destroy the church and imprison every Christian believer he possibly could. We're going to pick up the story starting in Acts chapter 8. If you want to turn there in your Bibles, otherwise we're going to bring it up on the screens here in just a minute. In Acts chapter 8, we have persecution that's breaking out against the church. We have the first recorded martyr of the faith in history. Who remembers his name? Stephen was the first martyr uh, for Jesus Christ. He was stoned to death. And guess who was right there as Stephen was being stoned to death? Guess who was there giving his approval to the death of Stephen? It was Paul or Saul. He was right there giving his approval. And from this moment on, Saul was resolute in his desire to destroy the church. So let's look at some passages. Acts chapter 8 verse 3. Listen to what it says. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. And now let's go to chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. 
Verse one and two. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went on, uh, he, he went on, uh, he went to the high priest and he asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. But in the midst of all that Paul was doing, in the midst of Paul headed to Damascus, in the midst of Paul's resolute desire to see Christians imprisoned and the church stopped, something happened that changed everything for Paul. And this is what we're going to look into today. Acts chapter 26, verse 12 through 18. The Apostle Paul here is standing before King Agrippa and he's giving his testimony about what happened in his life, about his conversion to Christ. He's really talking about Acts chapter 9 where it really happened. We don't have time to read all of that. So we're just going to read his testimony before King Agrippa as to what happened to him. Now remember, he's on the road to Damascus. He's going to look for some Christians that he's going to take back to prison with him. Let's pick up the story and see what happened to him, starting at verse 12. One day, I was on such a mission to Damascus, meaning to capture, to kill, to imprison, to, to harm believers. Armed with authority and commission of the leading priests. About noon, your majesty, as I was on the road, a light from heaven brighter than the sun shone down on me and my companions. We all fell down and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is useless for you to fight against my will. Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get to your feet. For I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant and witness. Tell the people that you have seen me. Tell them what I will show you in the future. And I will rescue you both from your own people and the Gentiles. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. They will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who, people who are set apart by faith in me. It is here within this passage we discover four things that show us what more than a resolution is all about. Four significant things that happened to Paul, and it is four significant things that we should pray that happened to us in 2020. Here it is, four things I'm praying for in 2020. Number one, here it is, he had an encounter. The apostle Paul in this story, before he came to Christ, he had a plan. He was fully devoted to his plan. How many of you know he was charging full steam ahead in the direction that he thought best? Like Paul, some of us are seated out here today. You've got your own plan for 2020. You don't really need to ask anybody about it. You don't really need to ask God about it. You have a plan. You know what's best. It's what you want to accomplish. But it is here in the midst of Paul charging full steam ahead that God shows up in the midst of Paul's direction. It is here that Paul encounters Jesus. It is here a bright light appears, brighter than the sun, the Bible says, and stops him dead in his tracks and knocks him to the ground. Here's what I want to say to everyone that's here today. We need encounters that stop us in the dead of our tracks. Write this into your notes if you would today. We all need encounters. You see, this encounter rocked Paul's world. Yes, Paul was running full steam ahead, but listen to me. He was running full steam ahead in the wrong direction. If we're going to make more than a resolution in 2020, we must encounter him. 
A real encounter with Jesus, you can put this in your notes, will stop you in your tracks and drop you to your knees. Hallelujah. And that is a good thing. When you truly encounter him, everything begins to change. I'm not talking about some dead, dry religion. I'm not talking about just showing up at church on Sunday. I'm talking about encountering the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in your life. He will change everything. I need a volunteer. Darren, would you come up here for a second? Now, in this story about Paul, how many of you know this guy was knocked down? This encounter was powerful. And I just want to say, there are times in our lives, listen, there are times where we need the Lord to show up in our lives. And sometimes we just need the Lord. Oh, you want to wrestle, huh? You get me down. Don't, don't, do, don't do that now. Sorry, I forgot where we were. We're in church. <laughs> Sometimes, how many of you know, we just need the gentle whisper of the Lord to come and to just say whatever he wants in that quiet moment in our lives. Sometimes that's what we need to make it through. There are other times we're going through it. Honestly, we need God to show up and we need a hug. We need God to show up and put his loving arms around us and just hold on to us. But there are other times where we are traveling in directions. We are so determined in our own, our own purpose, our own plan. Sometimes we need God to show up, grab us by the shoulders, get into the middle of our path and say, stop. Sometimes we need him to shake us. We need him to show up and we need to encounter him in a dramatic fashion. How many of you know Paul had a dramatic encounter? God showed up, grabbed Paul by the shoulders and said, wake up. The path you're going on is one of destruction. I want to turn your life around. Thank you, Darren. We'll get on that a little later. We'll get on that a little later. We all need encounters that'll grab us, grip us, and humble us. Throughout the book of Acts, you see the people of God having powerful encounters all the way through the book of Acts that changed everything for them. Sometimes sometimes God just needs to show up, jump into the middle of our path, grab us by the shoulders and say, I've got something better. I've got something different. This direction is not my plan for you. We need an encounter that shakes us up and wakes us up. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, talking about how many times these individuals encountered him in dramatic fashion. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire separate and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. From that moment on, everything changed for the church, did it not? And then Acts chapter 4, verse 31, talk about another dramatic encounter after they prayed. Notice that, notice what happens after you pray. Have you noticed that? In Acts chapter 2, look at Acts chapter 4. After they pray, prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. If 2020 is going to be different, we need to encounter Jesus in a powerful way this year. And I'm praying, God, I want to encounter you. How many of you want to encounter the Lord in a greater measure in 2020? (laughs) Secondly, here it is. What else happened to Paul? What else happened to Saul? He changed direction. Write that in. Look what happens to Paul after he encounters Jesus. Remember what he was headed to Damascus to do, to kill Christians, to imprison Christians, to stop the church. Listen to what he says. Acts 26, verse 17 and 18. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. What? Wait a minute. What happened here? Paul was on a path of destruction. But how many of you know now he's going to bring deliverance? 
It was a 180 degree turnaround for the Apostle Paul. Write this in if you would. Encounters with God can completely change our direction. In 2020, some of us may be moving in a direction with our plans, but what if our plans are the wrong plan? What does scripture say in Isaiah 55 verse eight? My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. Encounters with God will change our priorities. His ways will then become our ways. Write this in if you would. I've never seen anyone get up from an encounter with God and remain the same. It always changes something in their life. Have you ever had an experience where you came out the other side of something and you were lucky to be alive? Have you ever come out the other side of something and, and, and you, were, you were lucky to still be here on, on this earth? Maybe it was a sickness. Uh, maybe it was a near-death experience because of some issue. Maybe you were in a car accident, but it shook you to the core. And how many of you know when you came out the other side, you started looking at life a little bit different? Life can be short. I'm not promised tomorrow. I don't know how long I have. And those kinds of moments that shake you, those kinds of encounters change your vision and change your priority list. It's after these moments we reevaluate what's really important in life. We start to make some different decisions. This is exactly what happened to Paul. The moment he encountered the living God, what was once important was no longer important. What was once his plan was no longer his plan. He now was following through with what God was calling him to do. Write this in if you would. Encounters with God can save us from ourselves. For some that are in this room today, you're convinced this direction is the direction you should move in. But what if God is trying to get your attention? You're so focused, you're so driven, but he's saying that, just, that, that direction is gonna destroy you. What if he's trying to get you to turn and move in a different direction? Encounters with God will shake us, wake us, and turn our life around. Number three, here it is. What is the third thing that happened to the apostle Paul? Write it down if you would. He was transformed. How many of you wanna be transformed in 2020? I want to be transformed in 2020. What does the Bible say about the man Saul? Acts chapter 1-8, stoning of Stephen, there he is. And Saul approved of their killing him. How cruel do you have to be to stand there and watch somebody stoned to death? Acts chapter 8, verse 3. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house, he dragged men and women and put them in prison, Acts 9.1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. I, I hate to say it, but this description in scripture right here is describing Paul before he came to Christ. He was a terrorist. Think about what he was doing. Think about what happens in the Middle East today against Christians. Because he was a religious zealot for the faith he possessed, he was going out and grabbing and killing and martyring Christians and imprisoning them for their faith. So here he is. We, 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 we've seen those images in the Middle East, have we not? Our hearts go out to our brothers and sisters. That's what was happening in the New Testament. They were being martyred for their faith. And Paul was leading the charge in the effort. He was mean. He was hateful. He was cruel. He was brutal. He was bitter. But then Saul, on the road to Damascus, had an encounter with Jesus. And in one moment... He went from angry, bitter, vengeful to a man who would now share the love of Jesus Christ and the message of grace to all who would listen. How many of you know God can do more? God can do more in one moment in his presence than we can work out in a lifetime. This guy goes from angry, bitter, vengeful, mean, just, 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 just full of destruction to a man who now loved and cared and was going to bring the message of grace to the people. 
this is why Paul said, some of us don't understand why Paul said he was the chief of sinners. With that backdrop, you can see why he now considered himself the way he did. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 16. Paul is speaking. I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength for my work. I thank him for considering me worthy and appointing me to serve, even though in the past I spoke evil of him and persecuted and insulted him. But God was merciful to me because I did not yet have faith and so did not know what I was doing. And our Lord poured out his abundant grace on me and gave me faith and love, which are ours in union with Christ Jesus." This is a true saying to be completely accepted and believed. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I am the worst of them. You thought you were the worst of them. We think we're the worst of them. Paul says, I am the worst of them. But God was merciful to me in order that Christ Jesus might show his full patience in dealing with me. The worst of sinners. He's saying, if God could save me, a terrorist who tried to destroy the church, he can save anybody. As an example for all who would later believe in him and receive eternal life. Every time we encounter him, we are transformed. Maybe there are some areas of your life where you've almost given up on. The enemy, the enemy is saying to you, there's no way anything will ever change. In your mind, you said, this is just the way it's always going to be. I'm always going to have that anger. I'm always going to have this. I'm always going to have unforgiveness. And I'm here to say, no, 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 no. 2020 is your year. 2020 is the year that you are finally set free. Quit, put this in your notes, quit trying to change yourself. Did you hear me? Quit trying to change yourself. You know why? You can't. It's time to give up. Surrender and encounter the one who can change you. Sometimes we become our own worst enemy. We keep trying to change ourselves. One more time, God. I'm going to try one more time. And God is looking for you to say, to finally say, I'm done. I can't. I've tried. That's when God steps in and says, okay, now I can do something. I'm glad you're done. I'm glad you can't. I'm glad you've tried for the last time. Now let me step in and show you through the power of my Holy Spirit how I'm about to turn your life around. How awesome is that? When the apostle Paul was knocked from his high horse, blinded by the light and dropped to his knees, guess what? He was completely transformed in an instant. This guy was changed in an instant. And you know who he was changed by? Jesus Christ. Remember our key statement, key question? What does God want to do in me in 2020? What else happened to Paul as I start to wrap this up today? Here it is. He had a new calling, purpose, and mission. When Paul was on the road to Damascus, he was going with one thing in mind. Destroy the Christians and destroy the church. After he encountered Jesus, how many of you know he had a new calling, a new destiny, and a new mission? Look at his mission statement. Listen to what he says in Acts 26. He says, yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. You see, when we encounter him and he speaks, it changes everything. You know, the most exciting believers I'm ever around 
are the individuals that know their mission and their calling and they know God has been speaking a fresh word to them. I love getting with them because it's almost all they'll talk about. You know what God said to me? You know what God's been doing at the workplace? You know what God's doing in my home life? You know what God told me about 2020? Those are the individuals who were encountering Jesus and now they've got something to say about what God has infused inside of their hearts. If you want 2020 to be more than just another year, be determined to encounter him. I ask you as we close today, when was the last time you had a real encounter with the Lord? For some of you, it's been a long time. Maybe you're here at church every week, but you just, you're just doing your duty. You just kind of come in, you sit down, you put in an hour and 30 minutes on Sunday, and it really doesn't do anything to change your life. It really, it really doesn't mean much more than that. You just kind of come in, and you go out. And it's been a long time since you've had a, a real life tra a transforming encounter with Jesus Christ himself. It's been a while. And I am just challenging you here today. I'm challenging you to let God touch you and change you. I heard a story just the other day. So we close. You guys can begin to play. Um, I was talking to David Little. And you guys know some of David and Courtney's story. David was in prison. God brought he and Courtney to our church and it's been pretty miraculous. But lately they've been faced with some pretty tough scenarios in their life and, and David's really been going through it and he's really been questioning some things and, and, and he's got a lot of issues with some, some anger that God's been trying to get a hold of in his heart and, and he makes a step forward and he just keeps falling back and he was really discouraged and and I never forget taking about an hour to talk with him about what was going on. And, and he wanted to fall back into his old pattern. Well, I can just do it. I can buck up. I'll go to my old well. I'll just, I can make it through. I'll force it through. And I said, Dave, that is not what God is looking for you to do. He wants you to humble yourself. And he wants you to tell some other believers in your life. He wants you to trust them and open your heart to them. And I want you to take a step in that direction. He said, Pastor, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. I said, you can do it, Dave. And the moment you take a step of faith and do something different, God is going to meet you there. I didn't talk to him for about three or four days after he moved on. Three days later, I get a call from him. Dave, what's going on? Pastor Mark, I got to tell you, about the most incredible encounter that I've ever had in my life, aside from coming to Jesus Christ as my Savior. Dave, what's going on? It just doesn't even sound like you. Are you sure this is Dave Little? Is this Dave Little? What's going on, Dave? He said, I went over to Tim and Shirley Burley's house who have been reaching out to me and it was there in their living room. They, they asked me if I wanted to pray and at first I wasn't really into it, but they, they laid hands on me and, and they started to pray for me and he said, Pastor, after they began to pray and we pressed in a little bit, I had never really done that before and he said in that moment, he said, God showed up in that living room in a way that I had never seen before and as I was there, I started to get visions of my childhood that the Lord took me back to where my parents had left me alone and disappointed me and I could sense God showing up in my childhood and healing my heart and then I said God but where were you when I was in prison and I and, and God took me to a vision of me being in prison and I was wondering where God was in prison and in, pastor in the vision I looked down and my feet were off the floor and I felt the Lord say David I was there all the time I was holding you through it all and he said pastor then I saw God reach behind my heart in this vision he reached behind my heart and he started to heal some things that I didn't even know existed that have held me back for all of these years and he said pastor I cannot quit smiling I can't stop smiling I said this doesn't even sound 
like the man I was talking to three days ago. He said, Pastor, I've encountered God in a dramatic way. And I said, Dave, one moment in his presence can change everything. How many of you know that God wants us all to encounter him, to heal our hurts, to turn our lives around, to tell us that he has a plan and a destiny for us? And so today, as we conclude, we're going to open the altar for just a moment. The worship team is going to begin to sing. Two things I'm going to challenge you to do. One, let's conclude by just saying, man, I want to encounter him in 2020. I'm ready, God. And then I challenge you to come back and join us tonight for prayer and worship. I, I, I believe it's going to be pretty dynamic. And, and, and I would say we're going to encounter some powerful things in that service tonight. I encourage you to come at 5 o'clock and join us. But could we all stand? Let's bring the house lights down for a moment. We've got about six minutes left. If you just feel like, yeah, that's my heart, God. I, I want to encounter the Lord in 2020 in greater ways. If that's you, just come right now.